And the topic for today's presentation is corneal cross-linking, which I'll be presenting under the guidance of Dr. Rupashree BV ma'am. So the principle of CXL is that effective CXL needs three things, UVA, oxygen, and riboflavin. So UVA and riboflavin basically act through two pathways, oxidative pathway and glycosylation pathway. There is generation of reactive oxygen species, which ultimately leads to the formation of covalent crosslinks and it results in the strengthening of cornea. So before CXL, we can see in the picture that the cornea is weaker. After CXL, due to the formation of covalent bonds, the cornea becomes stronger. Now the indications of C3R, any progressive ectatic disease of the cornea, most commonly it is done for keratoconus. Other than that, it can be done for pellucid marginal degeneration, terrians marginal degeneration, post-refractive surgery ectasia, and these days it is indicated even in the cases of infectious keratitis. Uh, these are the various protocols that I will be discussing today. So starting with Dresden protocol, which is the standard protocol and is most commonly followed even in this date. So in Dresden's protocol, we instill topical anesthetic eye drops after which the central seven to nine mm of the epithelium is debrided, which is followed by the installation of riboflavin drops every two to five minutes for the first 30 minutes which is then followed by UVA irradiation. A beam of 370 nanometer at three milliwatt per centimeter square power is applied for 30 minutes. Even during this uh, duration, riboflavin drops are instilled every five minutes. We can see that this results in the formation of covalent bonds, which results in the increase in strengthening of cornea. This is an image of a patient undergoing CXN, and we can see in the ASOCT, the demarcation line, uh, two months post the procedure. Now accelerated protocols, uh, they deliver high UV radiation at a shorter duration. The aim is to reduce the patient discomfort and to reduce chances of endothelial damage. To achieve a cumulative dose of 5.4 joules per centimeter square, we reduce the time and increase the irradiation. The, but the treatment efficacy is maximum with the 10 minute protocol. Now the epithelium on protocol. There are three protocols. Uh, we can either try the chemical enhancers uh, in which we use benkel zoleum chloride and EDTA or the antiphoresis assisted riboflavin delivery or the phonophoresis uh, assisted riboflavin delivery. In phonophoresis, we utilize ultrasound to ensure greater delivery of riboflavin through the intact epithelium into the stroma. The mechanism of antiphoresis. Uh, in this, actually, an electric field is created in order to ensure the delivery of through the intact mm -hmm. epithelium into the stroma. Uh, pulse ultraviolet A. So what was happening was that in continuous uh, high UVA radiation, there was inadequate oxygen diffusion and oxygen is necessary for uh, good stiffening to take place, which was leading to unsatisfactory cross-linking. So uh, pulse delivery of UVA radiation actually leads to better oxygen diffusion into the stroma which ensures greater stiffening of the cornea. This is an image of the same. Uh, Cross-linking in thin corneas. So in uh, residence protocol, the minimum corneal thickness required is 400 microns. For thin corneas, we can either use riboflavin-soaked bandage contact lens or hypoosmolar cross-linking, or we can utilize refractive lenticule. Uh, in this image, we can uh, see that after the administration of hypoosmolar riboflavin solution, there is an increase in the thickness of cornea. And also after utilizing the riboflavin soaked bandage contact lens, we can achieve about 100 microns increase in the thickness of cornea. Adapted fluence. Now UVA fluence delivered in all cases has remained constant at 5.4 joules per centimeter square. Uh, adapted fluence is a newer approach which uh, states that we can increase the fluence so that the safety profile of CXL can increase, especially in thin corneas. However, this is a new approach and it still remains to be uh, validated. LASIK extra. So it is nothing but a combination of LASIK with C3R. In this, a flap is created. Eczymer ablation is done. After that, riboflavin application is done in the stromal bed for about 90 seconds. The flap is reposited and then UVA radiation is done for about the 90 more seconds. Uh, this ensures that there is no post-operative ectasia, especially in patients with uh, thin corneas. Thank you.
Yeah, Dr. Sharon, you can go ahead. Right, great presentation, Dr. Shivangi. Um, so first question to you, who invented collagen crosslink? Um, I'm Wallen Sack. Is it? Only him? Uh, Ma'am, Wallensack invented the Dresden Protocol in the University of uh, Dresden. It was then that is why it is named the Dresden Protocol. Uh, Correct. But was it only Wallensack? Uh, no, ma'am. Apart from uh, him, uh, uh, my name has slipped from my no problem. mind. No problem. Okay, but always remember such things. It is important to remember the history of the technique also. Um, it can be part of even a question that you get. Okay, Eberhard Spohl. That's the person who also with Wallensack. Okay. Then you spoke of Dresden protocol. Okay, that is our gold standard protocol uh, for collagen cross-linking, right? So one of the main things with Dresden protocol, as you said, epithelium has to be removed or kept intact? It has to be removed, ma'am. Removed. How much of epithelium do you remove? Ma'am, the central 7 to 9 mm of epithelium is removed. Okay. And how long do you think it takes to heal up after you? Approximately, ma'am, uh, one week it will uh, take to heal up. Five to seven days. Uh, okay. For that period of time, bandage contact lenses, uh, soft VCL is put and uh, we have to ensure that there is good oxygen delivery. How do you ensure a good oxygen delivery? Uh, you, you, you mentioned it. That's it. Okay, but yes, most of the bandage contact lens are, by definition, they have very high. What do they need to have to have a good oxygen permeability? They should have a high. Okay, not part of your, your topic. Okay, right. And last thing, you talked about um, contact lens assisted cross linking. Oh, what yes. is one prerequisite for that contact lens? Uh, can you put any contact lens? I mean, you can, but what would be ideal? Uh, ideal, ma'am, situation as in the ideal patient or? Uh... No, no, type of contact lens. There is a prerequisite on the contact lens. Um, that I'll have to read in greater detail. And what light are you using there? Uh, I'm UVA only UVA. we're utilizing. Okay, so you should make sure that they are not lenses which will block the UV because some lenses, okay. tech lenses have that also. Okay, and those protocols are very important. What you said, the 5.4 joules, all of that you need to understand. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. 